Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we're talking about thermal cameras or thermal imagers. I've had a few people on the channel ask me about you know how useful these devices are, which one I would recommend, and I, I have two of them. I own two, and I think it would be a very useful thing to do to compare the two and see which one is better or if uh, one might suit your needs better than the other. So the two cameras that I want to compare today is the Topton ITC 629 and the FLIR One Pro smartphone camera for, uh, for Android because I have an Android smartphone. So two very different devices here that promise to do the same thing. So to compare these what I want to do is look at four categories starting with ease of use then image quality, battery life and price and the totals here will be out of 20 points based on my opinion. <laughs> so uh, the FLIR one I bought myself about a year ago 400 bucks and I've used it you know several times uh, thermal imagers you don't you really use every day you might use them a handful of times per month uh, they're especially handy when doing electrical diagnostics in terms of like parasitic draws or seeing if there's a bad connection somewhere like high resistance connection with high current will be you know very hot and that's very easy to see in a thermal imager uh, for example, that Chevy Captiva with the bad crimps on the battery cables. We used a thermal imager for that. It was clear as day what the problem was. So let's start with ease of use. Uh, if you're in the field, ease of use is top priority. You want to get the camera, turn it on, boom, take a picture, do whatever, what you got to do. So starting with the top done, it's a standalone unit versus the FLIR one which is a piggyback off of your smartphone. So this one's very straightforward. Hold down the power button and it powers up in a few seconds. You gotta open the little flap here and we're ready to go. Okay. So you can see the image, you can squeeze the trigger, save the photo, yes. Very straightforward, takes a few seconds. Now, the FLIR, different story here. Let me set the camera up and show you all the, <laughs> the tricks here. So this is the camera itself. On paper, this looks very easy to use. This USB-C connector has a little adjuster wheel and you can extend the connector and it should be able to plug in to any smartphone. You know, they say even if you, if you have a protective case, this should reach the port. However, I have a you know life proof case here and Wah, wah, wah. Not going to work. It's not even close. What I have to do is go on Amazon and buy an extension cable for USB-C. Then I have to modify it so it would fit my phone this way. Then, because now if you attach the camera to the cable, you have two things that you're holding with your hands, the phone and the camera. Not very, you know, user friendly. So, open up the FLIR One app that you can download from you know, the Google Play Store. Turn on the camera. And, I have to put a Velcro strip on the back so I can piggyback the camera off the back and finally
it kicks in and you're good to go. So yeah, there's your camera's active and if you want to take a picture it's just like easy as taking a picture with your phone. Okay so once you get around all those setups with the FLIR um, it works. So ease of use, let's, uh, let's tally that up. So for ease of use, I gave the top done a four, since it's easy to turn on and easy to take pictures. The uh, FLIR 1 Pro gets a three just because you have to, A, buy a separate cable if you have a case, put a Velcro strap on there, but once it turns on, you know, it works. Uh, the other thing is how to transfer pictures. The top done has a just one plug here, just a regular USB micro. Uh, you plug into your computer and download your pictures. That's also how you charge it. So, and then from your phone, you can transfer pictures to your computer any way you want. Uh, either plug in your phone or send it via email or whatever. But uh, attaching a picture to the customer's invoice <clears throat> is often very effective because you kind of, you know, it's also pretty cool. <laughs> so that's that category. Next, let's move on to image quality. So for image quality, what I want to do is focus the camera in on a fuse box. And for electrical diagnostics, this, that's what you're often doing when you're looking for a parasitic draw. You want to find the fuse that's warm or the relay. That'll tell you the current's going through that one. So on this Volvo, Here's the fuse box. Let's try the, the top done. And you see a hot spot right there. And using the left and right arrow keys, we can do just a visual image and then overlay the thermal image over top of that. Now, Which one is warm and can you tell the fuse is apart here? So it looks like that relay is warm. And then what's this hot spot here? Well, one thing that the top gun suffers from is the cameras, the actual visual and thermal cameras are pretty far apart. So you get this uh, kind of overlay that's not quite correct unless you do image calibration. So if you do image calibration, you can drag the physical image and align it with the thermal image. And if you have to do this every time, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I think that's the hot relay. You see now it aligns more or less. So you hit enter back. So when you're doing this type of work, it's hard to say if you're not aligned which fuse is which because you just have rows of fuses. So that's one thing that's my one of my biggest complaints about the top gun. Let's try the FLIR. Now, image quality on the FLIR is quite impressive. The thermal camera, the resolution is about the same, but the visual, the resolution is about 10 times better. In the alignment, you can see the cameras are closer together, so you don't get that image separation like you do on the top gun. So here we can see the relay it's definitely the warm one. And visually you can you can actually read the fuse rating so like the 10 amp and the 15 amp. So those two guys are definitely warm compared to the other the other fuses. Let's keep going down here.
and it looks like that 15 amp is also getting warm. And you can also do camera alignment if you really want to get it spot on. Again, it depends on which way you're oriented. So that's just a comparison of the image quality. I think the FLIR versus the top done depends on what you're using it for. For big items, obviously the, it doesn't matter so much if the images are aligned, but for really fine work, like fuses close to each other, the FLIR wins hands down in this category. So for image quality, I gave the FLIR one a 4 out of 5, and the top done gets a 2 out of 5, just because of that um, image calibration thermal to visual, uh, the alignment is always off. You always have to tweak it, and that can just cost you a lot of time. Uh, and the resolution on the FLIR one in the visual camera is a lot better. If you look at the specs, right here, thermal resolution for the FLIR one is 160 by 120, but visual is 1440 by 1080. Compared to the top done, infrared image resolution is about the same, 220 by 160 but the visual is 320 by 240, so it's not much better. And the FLIR app uh, does a much better job in rendering the visual so you can overlay that thermal image on top of it and actually know what you're looking at. Um, next, battery life. So battery life. The top done, I think the last time I charged this thing was like a month ago, and I swear the battery in this thing is amazing. They say it's three hour continuous use. And I believe it because the battery is still you know, almost full. It's awesome. So this thing, you can not worry about charging it very often and just keep using it. FLIR 1 on the other hand, to see the battery life, you go here, you, we got 61% right now. We started fully charged uh, just about you know 15 minutes ago. And on the website it says one hour continuous runtime. Um, that's pretty accurate. I left it on for an hour. It you know ran all the way down. But if you leave this thing sit somewhere, I think the battery is just so small it depletes just on its own. And when you want to use it, like, hey, my battery's dead. It, that's kind of a frustrating thing, especially in the field, where you want to get the camera out and use it. So the top done in battery life category wins hands down. <laughs> the FLIR, you know, they give you a little power bank, wonder why, um, and it doesn't charge off your phone through the cable. You need a separate cable to plug in the power bank into the top port here also USB-C on the camera. So then you got the camera and the power bank. If you're lo running low on battery, it just becomes really cumbersome. So battery life, I'm gonna give Top Done five out of five, and the FLIR one, oh, I don't know, two or three. I guess let's go with a three. One hour is, isn't terrible for such a small device, but Top done wins in that category. So final category is price. Both of these cameras are around the $400 mark. Again, not cheap, especially for something you don't use every day, 
but when you need it, it's really nice to have, you know, any thermal imager. So, the Flea Run Pro retails for 400 bucks on Amazon, and the Top Done, uh, right now, I think they have a sale, a discount code, I'll post it in the description, it brings the price to like 360 bucks. But regardless, I'll give these both a three because you know technology is evolving 10 years ago having a thermal camera on your phone unheard of <laughs> but now hey go ahead and buy one and it works so let's total up the points and see who the winner is so totaling up the points it's a very close race top done ends up at 14 out of 20 the Fleer one pro android 13 out of 20 um, it's a toss-up. In every category, there's a camera that shines. Ease of use, top done's a standalone unit, point and shoot. Uh, the Fleer One Pro, again, a piggyback unit, depending on your phone, the case, you need an adapter. And then, I guess the battery life also plays into ease of use, where if the battery dies really fast, you need a power bank. So, the Fleer One Pro is kind of lacking in those categories but then when you go to image quality hey <laughs> it's really nice to have a good image at the end of the day even though you have to work a little harder to get it that's where the FLIR one is at the top of its game price about equal so which one do I recommend honestly I'm I'm kinda of torn I, I like having both for a quick snapshot the top does just you know in the toolbox you grab it and go um, for something detailed like fuse boxes I'll take the time to hook up the FLIR 1 and so I have that really nice image and you can also actually record videos with the FLIR 1 with the app you can't on the top then so uh, that's that's my review I have links to both in the video description again I uh, hope that you found that helpful and if you have any questions post them in the comments and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So I'm actually recording a video with the FLIR 1 Pro on my phone. Here's what it looks like. Very handy to pick out power-hungry devices on your wall. Pretty awesome.